This is the marking out for the cylinder bore and the crank shaft bore. I don't know how much of the markings out you can see, uh, but the way I did it, and there's probably better ways, I used my caliper set to half the distances and just scribed a line both ways and then centre popped it and that centre pop is what I'm going to use to set up the this uh, crankcase in a forge or chuck to allow me to drill and bore it in both directions I say there's probably more technical ways of doing it, but that's the way I do it. Take the measurement across, divide it by two in half, set the caliper exactly to that, and then just scribe it like that. And I scribe it from both sides, so I know it's coming in the middle. Uh, if you're wondering what I'm doing with the uh, hypodermic on my uh, desk, that is so I knew where the focal range was, but also that's my daily shot of diesel fuel. This is me centre popping the top of the crank case. And I say these centre pops will be used to centre it in a forge or a chuck. This is a job I find a bit of a pain on these small lathes. Just changing out the chucks, swapping from your three jaw to your four jaw, or, or your collet. I just wish there was some quick release method for the chucks, like you've got for the tooling. Because I shake, obviously, there's bloody nuts and washers flying all over the place. I'm forever looking for them. But it is a slow old job. Well, I'm just getting the lathe ready to. Uh, Mount the crankcase in, and uh, I'll attempt to show how I set it up and uh, get it centered for drilling and boring. The way I do it uh, is uh, all been all the information is been gleaned off people like John Mills and Keith Fenner and uh, many other contributors to the YouTube channels for this sort of stuff. Uh, that's how I've learned everything. What people did years ago when there was no YouTube, I don't know. 
because it is a terrific source of information. Not that anybody's going to get any useful information off this junk. Right, just nip them, search for the chuck key, and just give them a last little nip. some little aluminium shims to protect the camp case while I centre it in the chuck. After roughly aligning uh, the crank case in the forward drawer chuck and putting some small aluminium packing pieces to save it getting marked uh, I'm really nearly ready for the next stage of lining it up uh, but I've just well I can just see the last one I did I didn't put packing in so I made marks having added two millimeters of aluminium packing around the outside and the block being a few millimeters taller I'm right at the extent of my jaw, especially one of them, well that one. So I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to get this on centre or not. So, this is how I go about clocking in an object like this in the four jaw chuck. Uh, this has, it is symmetrical all round parallel so I just make sure that it is up to the back of the jaw and then you need one of these a sprung centre this is a uh, design by John Mills and others I think so you've got to make yourself one of those it's got a sprung centre and it's got a, uh, a hole up the back a centre hole to fit on a centre. So you pop that in there and you pop the centre hole in your pop mark. Now unfortunately, because we can't be asked, I haven't got the facility in this shed to be able to give you clock shots and every other shot there is going. You don't have to take me word for what it says on the clock. Uh, so we just fasten that down and it doesn't look too bad now. It's nowhere near centre but it doesn't look too bad. So first of all you bring your clock into the end of the sprung centre and I usually give it a couple of millimetres at least. I've got my zero at the top and now I'm going to rotate only just rotate the piece and we find that there is a high spot and it's between two jaws so I'm just backing off the dial and then fetching it back up to the zero and then I'm going to tighten these two jaws uh, we need to know how far out it is it is oh, 80 thou at least 82 so we want to bring it back 40 uh, been handy if it had been on one jaw but it's on two so uh, probably and this is where all my packing pieces obviously 
and start dropping out. So I'm just just giving them a slight slack. And then we'll uh, tighten up these two. Just my zero and I'll wind him round again. And now we have uh, 10, 25, and the high spot is still between those two. I don't like it when it's like that, so we'll just uh, slacken them two off again. Just a Nurkle. Hardly noticeable how much is like them. And I will put some tension on these two. I want to drop at least 12 to that one, followed by. See what we've done to it now. So that's the high spot there now. That's on one jaw! Hooray! So we'll just bring that back up to the zero. We're within 19, 18, and 19. From there, now we are still between two jaws. We'll just see if we can do this just by tensioning. So I put a bit on this one and a bit on this one. Already, we see an improvement. There's the high spot. Let's bring the dial back to zero, and we're now within one, two, three, one, two, three, three and a half to four thou. Uh, high spot again. I'm looking for two now. See what I can see, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> it's gone further out. So I'll find the high spot again. And I've got the high spot on this big jaw here. Uh, back that I'll fetch it up to there. Down. Job done. Even. That's within half a thou. I can't even tell where the other spot is now. There's 
John Mills would say, we're not making parts of the nuclear industry, so that's tight. That was a bit slack. That's tight. And that's tight. It's moved a bit. It's a fine high spot. Three, so see if we can get it on this one. Spanner, wherever it's gone. Oh, they just, just check that again. Good job, I checked it. That's the high spot now. Well, that's as near as I can make it bob on. There's more movement in the lathe than there is in that. So, it looks like we're running through. How's that? And, uh, oh, I wish you could see the needle. <laughs> I think that's good, especially for an idiot like me. I don't think I can uh, move the camera, but I'll try. Oh, that's close enough, isn't it? That's been fair. 